So how will the narcissist react when you know who they really are? Hi, I'm Nanette. Welcome back to Narcissism Exposed. So you've been in a relationship or you are in a relationship currently and you're going through the cycle of abuse with the narcissist and you being the empath, you being the Christian, you being the good person, you are willing to work with this person who is displaying poor uh, character, they're being mean at times, they're, they don't want to have a conversation with resolution, they don't want to see your perspective, uh, yet through the love bombing, you've formed an attachment with this person. So in your perspective, you're thinking, well, you know, maybe they had a bad upbringing, maybe they had a bad marriage or their previous relationship was really bad. So you're trying to make things work and you're explaining yourself and you're, uh, you continue to work at the situation and the relationship and you do everything that you can, not knowing that under the radar, this narcissist is doing a push, pull, push, pull with you in his or her attempt to control and manipulate you because it's all about control, manipulation, and supply. And when they're not getting enough supply from you, then of course you get the derailment, the belittling, the uh, defacement, devaluing until finally you think, well, maybe I was a little rough or t maybe I wasn't as kind. And then you get back into the role playing with the narcissist as he or she writes the narrative for you. And you one day say, you know what? You get this aha moment and you think, I don't like how this relationship is going. I never feel heard. We can never have an adult conversation and come to some resolution together where not only am I, we considering the narcissist's feelings, which it becomes all about how they feel, um, it, it never is about how you feel or your thoughts about the situation. It's almost like you're, you're constantly trying to placate the narcissist so they don't blow up and they don't explode, explode. And you realize, I don't want to be in this unhealthy relationship anymore. This really is going nowhere. I feel like I'm on a merry-go-round, like on this little Groundhog Day loop and everything is becoming very predictable. You come to your senses and you realize I deserve better than this. So you keep confronting uh, the narcissist, you either rebuild or build stronger boundaries and you don't accept the baloney, right? and you are making them accountable for the way that they're treating you and how they've been treating you. But guess what? Now you are actually pushing the narcissist into a corner. They don't like that. They feel out of control. They always need to feel in control because internally, they are never in control of their own emotions. They're never in control of their own thoughts. They have to have constant outside or external validation. So you are putting, pushing them into a corner and guess what? They feel exposed. And when you start having that mask, you're pulling it off their face like that, they can't stand that. They go into a rage and exposing the narcissist. Oh, it just, there's a backlash of anger, resentment, and hatred for you. You actually see visually in their face, their expression, their words that they are shouting at you, all of this rage because they're no longer in control. You have awoken to the narcissist strategies and tactics and trickery, and you're not taking it anymore. Uh, but I want you to be ready because when you find out what you're really dealing with, it, it, you're opening a can of worms here. And I want you to be very, very careful because it can get dangerous with the narcissist. They're so full of rage and driven by evil forces and evil thoughts towards you, towards their victim that they will do anything from threatening you, bullying you, calling you all kinds of names, and uh, very dangerously, they could actually physically abuse you. 
So this is a very, very uh, volatile time when that mask is being ripped off by you awakening to the strategies of this narcissist who you no longer want to be a part of. Narcissists hate boundaries. They they do not respect your feelings. Uh, everything is about them. And if you call them out on something where they said something mean and belittling, they'll say, well, you made me do that. I didn't like how you said this, this, and this, and deflecting their bad behavior onto you, but you're onto them now. You get it. You had have had the aha moment, the awakening, and now you're confronting the narcissist that you are ending this relationship or maybe they, they're ending it because you found out. In either way, either whether you discard them or they discarded you, count it as a gift. That is a beautiful gift because you are washing your hands of having to deal with this dirty pig that has no other intention than to use, control, manipulate, and destroy you. That is not a relationship. That is a situation that you absolutely must exit, but exit it safely because of the volatility of the narcissist and the extreme rage that they can explode onto you. Now, not every narcissist reacts the same exact way. Some may just uh, make their fast exit, then go behind your back doing a smear campaign, finding new supply right away so that everyone around them, they try to make it look like, well, she wasn't good for me anyway. She wasn't the right person. She was abusive. She was everything they were. They're going to say they're in their smear campaign that you were, right? And then them getting somebody new right away and saying, no, this is really the person for me. She or he wasn't what I really needed. This is who I, but in the end, you have to understand that when people, that's not normal. That's not normal for somebody to, uh, to leave a relationship that somebody's been in for a while and then hop on the dating site and boop, I found myself somebody else, my true love in one week. So they're really not fooling everyone. They may fool, the narcissist may fool some people, but they are definitely not fooling everyone. I've talked to enough people and um, victims of narcissists and their situationships. And um, a lot of times people close to the narcissist know that the narcissist is not well. They might, may not put the term narcissist on that person because they have not done any research on it. But for the most part, they're just basically yesing them. Oh yeah. Yeah. Because they don't want to deal with that narcissist. They don't want to get their hands dirty. They don't want to jeopardize their own close relationships by getting entangled with this narcissist. So I just want to put that out there so you understand that not everybody is believing what the narcissist is saying. Many times when they they just their head bobble. Oh, okay, yeah, because they don't want to get dirtied up by the narcissist. The narcissist has this extreme addiction and you taking that mask down is like you interfering with their addiction such as would be comparable to somebody who's an alcoholic and they're highly addicted and you trying to take their bottle of booze away. So now you've caused a narcissistic injury and the narcissist is completely enraged because now they feel out of control. That's their addiction to have supply that they are controlling and that they do that through the control, manipulation, um, belittling, uh, devaluing, all of this, uh, or love bombing, little periods of love bombing again. And this is their cycle of control. And whether a good reaction from you or, or where you're ang angry, they love it. The, it's very devilish and really sick and twisted, but any kind of attention they can get to feel like they've caused a reaction from you, they're in, internally very gleeful. 
and they want nothing more than to make sure that they have control over all the people around them because they have no internal control. They have no internal regulation. So to get rid of that shame and guilt that they feel, their own internal judgment of themselves, they seek out to cause you shame, you judgment, uh, and, and that to them makes them feel good about their, their selves, themselves. And so don't get caught up in this at all. It's very, very evil and very, very demonic. And, but that is the thing that the, the narcissist can't stand is being out of control. And the number one fear a narcissist has is abandonment. If they feel abandoned, they are left with themselves. They cannot face their own inner shame. They cannot face who they really are on the inside. And so you will, you will activate that rage like nothing else and be prepared where they're going to try to make you feel guilty, uh, point fingers at you. They're going to bring out the big guns, right? And you need to understand that these, this is coming from a devilish influence and there is no reasoning or having a conversation or any futility of, of any normalcy of, of a conversation with a narcissist. Uh, it just never has that, that nice com uh, reciprocity, camaraderie, oh, hey, let's talk like adults and let's have empathy and compassion for each other. So again, you, you getting the narcissist out of your life is a gift to you. And shut the door, close the windows, lock the windows and close the shades down and completely detach because this really is a monster in disguise and you want to actually have, you should have what you are. You are a good person. You're an empath. You're a Christian. You deserve friends. You deserve a partner. You deserve a husband or a wife. You deserve all of, the, all of that. People who are like you so that you can encourage each other, you can build each other up. So now that you have had this awakening and you are no longer tolerating this bad behavior, and in fact, you have walked away permanently from this bad behavior. And I want you to keep reminding yourself of the hell you've been through with this person. Every time the narcissist tries to knock back at your door ever so sheepishly or tries to hoover you in some way or comment on your social media, at this point you will be blocking him or her from every social media platform you can think of. You will be letting your friends know, please block them as well. Uh, don't answer any of their messages, their text messages or phone calls or anything like that. So now that you've had the awakening and right now, you are it, it's been traumatic and you've had a, a trauma bond and you need time to heal from this whirlwind of of hell and abuse and evil that you've just been a part of innocently on your part and how we're going to do that is by turning to a higher power and that higher power is God Almighty and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and we're going to recognize what this situation really was and, and is. In Ephesians chapter 6, verse 12, it says, For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. This was not a physical battle with you and the narcissist. This was a spiritual warfare. And understanding it from that perspective, you would never cohabitate with devil spirits, would you? Knowingly. No. But now that you've had the awakening and now you're getting the enlightenment from God's word, now you know you never want to be in that situation again. And here's another great verse that describes how we, are, as Christians, we are not to uh, partner up with somebody loaded with devil spirits, loaded with hate and punishment uh, and reproach. We don't want to team up with them. We don't want to partner with them because you are light. 
you are God's child. God's word says God is light and in him is no darkness at all. And when you confess Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior and believe in your heart that God rose from the dead, as Romans chapter 10 verses 9 and 10 say, you become a child of God and that light is now in you. And the verse I want to share with you is in 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 14, and it says, Don't team up with those who are unbelievers. How can righteousness be a partner with wickedness? How can light live with darkness? It can't. It absolutely can't. And another verse in God's Word speaks about how light manifests or makes known the darkness when you exposed that narcissist and ripped off that mask, you that reaction you got were, was wickedness and darkness being enraged because they found out, you found out, you found out, and now they know that you found out and they can't pull all of that wickedness back on you again. So kudos to you. But I want you to find solace and strength in the Lord and in the power of his might and in God's word. And the more you put on that word of God in your heart and life, the more it will accelerate the healing in you. And the more your understanding will be illuminated and you will walk in peace and you will understand that moving forward, how to avoid that situation again because your eyes will be wide open. No longer will you uh, get trapped into uh, a relationship with a narcissist because you will know what to expect with their MO, but even higher than that from God's word, what it says and understanding that it's not your job to make somebody a good person. If they are not already a good person, that's darkness and you are to stay away from that. Don't be unequally yoked. Don't team up with that type of person. You want somebody just like you. So if this information helped you, do hit the like button and be sure to hit the subscribe button. And don't forget to hit the notification bell so you'll be notified the next time I put out a video. And until next time, Walk in peace and stay blessed in your heart.